What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and today we're gonna to talk about my NSX again. And last time you remember, I had a $3 fix, which I thought would take care of my car. A little optimistic on my part. It ended up becoming an impediment in my driveway. I like to cycle through cars, and when I started trying to move them around, this one didn't want to budge. I knew there was a bigger problem. I checked the fluid. It seemed to be full. Time to go to somebody who knew a little bit more than me. Get out of my garbage, squirrels. Everything, squirrels, raccoons, you name it. Everybody goes in my garbage. Anyway, um, and then I gotta clean it all up. Got the NSX here in the Alert 5 uh, backup position. And unfortunately, it's not doing so hot. So clearly, there was a bigger problem that obviously everybody pointed out. Let me see, I gotta get down in there. But let me just pop the hood first to show you that there's fluid still in it. Uh, the net result is I call AAA and we're gonna get this thing over to the dealer and maybe do a car wash. And clutch reservoir, still full. So that problem has at least been rectified. Now, no immediate signs of fluid drip anywhere. And you'd be looking along the firewall there. If I can focus on that. Get up in there. Um, that's the, where the clutch fluid goes through the firewall. Let's go check out in the car. Uh, actually, you know what? You do see it right there. See the uh, this piston right there where it's going into the wall? It looks like there's a little drippy drippy right there. And that would be the problem. Problem now with the clutch is you have nothing all the way to there. And if you look, the clutch is almost fully depressed at that point in time. And then sometimes it'll sort of hang up here at this position. But, I don't know. So, and I guess that's all the fluid on the carpet. So we found our culprit, but off to the dealership. So ultimately I had to tow it up to the dealership. Uh, I called AAA, got it down to the dealership. I didn't want to drive it. Uh, I, I realized when I stepped on the pedal a couple of times and sort of primed it, that it would be able to shift in and out of gears. If I didn't do that, I couldn't get it into and out of any gear while the car was um, was on. And that really, I didn't feel comfortable driving it down to the dealership like that. A, I didn't want to get stranded, and B, I didn't want to do damage to the car, which is why I towed it. Since AAA is here, I've got no problem shifting. No, that's not, not perfect. But at least, I mean, into reverse, into gear. I couldn't even do that in the driveway. It was sort of stuck. I had to turn the car off, put it into the gear, and now I'm, I'm pretty sure with the current setup, I mean, foot's on the clutch right now, and I can sort of catch any gear. Uh, I could probably make it to the dealership, but I will use those AAA toes and get it down. So after I towed it to the dealership, they called up and confirmed what I thought it was, which was the master cylinder but they wanted $780 to repair it, which to me, I'm, I'm so used to exotic cars, like 780 bucks, if you can get it back to me tomorrow, that's great. I'm going to, I, the reason I wanted to get this wrapped up this week is I was going to the event up in Boston. If you're there, I'll see you on Sunday. I'm sure there's tickets left. Check the description if you wanna come out and say hello if you're in Boston for Memorial Day weekend. But the, uh, the car itself, 780 seemed like a good, uh, good deal, but I was like, you know what? Let me shop it around first. You should always shop around a repair, especially when it's something that's not really that complicated. The dealership was charging, I got the breakdown, 500 for labor, that's four hours, which I guess is book time, and then $280 for the part. I called Corsa Motors, I called Autosport Performance, both shops locally that work on my cars. Uh, Corsa Cosmo was busy, didn't get back to me, but uh, Autosport came back at 190 for labor and 150 for the part. And I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense. I looked up online. The part was available for $100 online shipped, which is okay, but I understood I wouldn't get it the next day. Um, the 
retail on the part was $190 through Acura. So the fact that the dealer was charging me $280, sort of annoying. But also the labor I knew, I know book time, book time, but uh, which is a dealership will always book, car, uh, charge book time. If it takes them more time, they're not gonna charge you anymore. But ultimately book time always pads in extra time uh, for the tech, much more time than the job would take. So I pulled the car out of the dealership and drove it over to um, Autosport to get the job done. They did it, I got it back same day. It ended up being this part here, which is the master cylinder, which uh, pokes through the firewall. That's why you see it bolts on, on that side. Uh, this connects to the clutch pedal. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, man, getting dirty. Um, but ultimately this goes in and out, the press. And this was leaking, that was <clears throat> causing the, the long-term loss of fluid, but it also uh, was a fairly easy thing to replace, proving that my optimism that my $3 fix was gonna be anything more than something to get me home. It was still a success because it saved me the tow, but ultimately I was wrong because even though I pulled the car out of the dealer and shopped it elsewhere, I've got two invoices. Uh, Auto Sports final invoice was 340. So the dealership was at 780 and Auto Sport was at 340, but uh, the dealership still charged me their diagnostic time for an hour. Uh, they usually waive that. Well, all places will charge you the diagnostic time if you don't do the job with them. But it was cheaper to just burn that $138 and get the job done elsewhere because 140 plus 340, 480, still saved me $300 over doing the job at the dealership. Uh, so I, I did burn that money and ultimately next time I've learned a lesson and I should know better, but you should always go to the independent mechanics first. Cars are cars, there's nothing special about your car. By going to an independent mechanic, you save at least the diagnostic time, but the dealer usually is never cheaper. There's never a time where I recall a dealership being cheaper or even necessarily better than an independent shop in fixing a car, unless it's like some really weird specialty car, but, but I don't see that. Uh, having a specific scan tool or something that an independent may not have is the only time you would go to a dealership, but out of warranty, go straight to the independent. If the independent can't do it, then you bring it to the dealership. That's a much smarter way to go. A lot of the guys that work at the uh, independent shops used to work at dealerships, open their own shops, uh, you name it, and a, and a lot of the guys at dealerships came right out of ITT Tech and you name it, uh, Joe Blow Mechanics School. So there's no guarantee that you're getting a, a specialized tech working on your car, regardless of how special you think it is. The labor rate through the dealership is the same, whether they've got the guy that's been there for 30 years or the guy that's been there for three days, they're billing you the same thing. So keep that in mind. I'm glad uh, I got this car up and running. It was a real quick, easy fix. This is probably one of the more reliable and effortless cars I've ever owned as far as maintaining and, and keeping running well. Uh, so I, I've got to give a thumbs up to Acura for that, but it, it just, it's expected. It's why the car has such a good long-term value. I've learned also, uh, aside from my silliness of going to the dealership, I've also learned that I'm not the, I'm a good roadside mechanic, but I'm not a good long-term mechanic. And I was a little too optimistic thinking by just filling up the fluid uh, that I solved my problem. So there you go, there's the update. Uh, now, I mean, I can't remember the last time I did, the clutch was the last job I did with that, with this car. So that was over a year ago, about a year ago. So uh, a couple of adventure drives and um, lots of driving and it's 500 bucks in the last, $483 if you count my three bucks. Uh, $483 to maintain it over the last year since I did the clutch, that's not too bad. Thank you for watching. I'll see you up in Boston if you're gonna be up there. If not, I hope you're enjoying the, the real life cost of ownership videos that I try to bring you guys. If something goes wrong, not bragging about it. I'm just letting you know what you can expect so, so you don't go into buying a car thinking that it's gonna be, well, it's really reliable. The uh, master cylinder problem on this car is not unheard of. It's not common that it happens to every car at a certain mileage, but it is not unheard of. And the car's got 94,000 miles on it. So you expect things to go wrong along the way or break along the way. I will keep you informed as to what those things are. And uh, if you, I can't ever dismay somebody from going out and buying an NSX. It's a good, fun, 
uh, reliable car, and that's why I'm driving it up to Boston. It's four and a half hours each way, but uh, I know this car will make it. I could take the top down, and I'm going to enjoy it this weekend. So have a happy Memorial Day weekend. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the channel. Subscribe below. Thank you. We just hit 600,000 subscribers. So uh, this is the first video after that milestone, and I'm looking forward to riding all the way to a million and beyond with you guys, which may not be this year, but we could always hope. There's that optimism again. Thanks for watching.